You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Thanks for threatening me with 12 years at first and I've done a plea bargain and got four. Um, so I was out in two, but that was long enough for me. That, was, that wasn't good. That was for kidnapping? Yeah. And I was actually abusing that relationship. You know, I've been stabbed in that relationship. Lots of crazy shit there. Um, and then, you know, constantly put down, told I got a tiny penis, <laughs> um, told that I was really ugly. And it, it actually, I was actually started to believe her. What's the most bods you've fucked in a day? Um, probably about 10. <sighs> I, I actually took a penis injection that day because I knew how big she was in the, in the game. So I thought, right, this can't fail. So I jabbed up and it was, when you have the injection, it's, it's, it's the biggest erection I've ever had. When I was hearing that earlier, as I say, I, it was just, yeah. it wasn't good. I was getting hot and, and sweaty yeah, and flustered and shit. And it was just, because she's saying that with her mum, and I was like, no, that, that was abuse. She's like, no, no, no. Like, and then the, the guys in, in the car and all that. And like you say, she, I think she was like, she was 10 years old. That yeah. was abuse. So. Mm -hmm. Ben, we're on. Okay, let's do it. And today's guest, we've got porn star Damien Oliver. Hey there, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Just had your missus on there. You yeah. sat behind the scenes. Like, yeah. How was that for you? She went pretty dark as well, but her past. And like, obviously, you he's, he's have your orgies, you have your parties, you have escorting together, OnlyFans, porn. But how is that listening to a story more in depth? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard being there and not be able to say anything. I didn't want to start saying things out and coming across as the controlling person when you're having your one-to-one. Your -one. But normally I will say things to comfort her or if I don't agree on something, when we talk about these things, when we've had our heart-to-hearts. Yeah. So it is quite difficult at times to sit there and, and not say anything. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I don't agree with a lot of it. Um, but, you know, that's her past and um, we're here now. So. Yeah. But you seem to get on okay just to do your thing and kind of block out the past. Yeah. Is that all the shagging and all the parties and that, is that help with the pain yeah um sometimes but then also there's the other side to us where we're both good parents and you know we bought like merlin passes for the kids which gets us into all the attractions whenever we want and we do a lot like, mm -hmm. stuff like that family stuff as well so that is a distraction from our past and our mental health as well that's that's good for us so. yeah i always go back to the start of my guests yeah where did you grow up and how it all began i uh, grew up in southeast london um uh yeah uh i was all my childhood was was shit really um my nan and granddad both had cancer started off with my nan breast cancer so every day after primary school up to the hospital in london where i would spend all every evening up there and that carried on until secondary school until the point my nan died and then we had to care for my granddad because he was lonely and heartbroken for my nan um so yeah there wasn't really much of a childhood mum and dad breaking up and there was, you know, I spent a lot of my time with Nan and Grandad, who was like my parents. So that was that was quite hard. Uh, when they died at about, when my Nan died at 14, that was when I kind of went off the rails. Um, I was still used to see my Grandad most days, but then the other days it was almost like I was playing catch up on all the other people that had, you know, gone out, tried drugs, was fucking, and you know, and things like that, breaking the law basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of caught up overtook everyone and did it all the mad shit in a quick space of time and landed myself up in jail um what age that was uh, by 17 i was in jail um and then you know there was a whole thing of being kicked out of school and all that sort of shit as well um and then yeah just finding myself in a lot of trouble um fucking around gangs and doing doing bad shit you know yeah ain't it mad though but the, it's kind of the same patterns with the broken homes yeah and that but the no stability like because all we just want to feel is love that's it as a kids as adults like when you're in a relationship or somebody loves you it's such it's the best feeling in the world because it kind of kinda numbs your pain yeah. pain's not there and then it becomes a drug but that's when you end up becoming obsessed or because you're chasing something just that feeling of not feeling worthless or empty like yeah but all the same patterns from people in the porn industry like drug dealers gangsters like 
it's all from broken fucking homes, man. And it, yeah. it, and the patterns are there. It's clearly there to see. Like I've, yeah. I've interviewed three hundred people, and it's always the same. Like raised by then, you probably the best grandparents on the planet. Like you would do anything for them, but it's still not enough because it's not your mum or your dad. Like yeah, what was it like your first time in prison? It was hard to be honest. It was only four months to two. Um, my mum was saying about trying to pay for bail and trying to avoid it. I said, mum, don't worry, it's fine. Um, I knew a lot of people that was in there. Um, so I felt like I had that bit of protection, but it was still scary. As soon as I went in there and started getting strip searched and all this stuff, then it kind of hit home. You know, you go in the, the door to the wings, the, you know, you're in this cage, that's closed. And then you're in there, it's our like, shit, you know, and there's all, all this craziness going on. There's all these people, you know, some big guys and you're like, okay, fuck, you know, how's this going to go down? And you've, it's that level between, you know, not being a cocky person, but not being a bitch as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to just try and work it all out. But it was it was all a big test for me. Um, but the, the main thing was, you know, I just I just kept my head out of trouble and, and just tried to, you know, keep fit and yeah. get out as quick as I could. And What did you do when you came out? Uh, I, would, I, I don't think the sentence was harsh enough, to be honest, because I come out and, and carry on the same, mm -hmm. um, which was, you know, fighting... Um, doing dumb shit like that, getting on drugs, you know, usual shit. Um, it wasn't until I got into my long-term relationship and had kids that I got a heavier sentence. And that was the one that really changed me. And I learned about who I was for the first time, it, it seems, um, in that during that sentence. What was that sentence? Um, it was basically they threatened me with 12 years at first and I'd done a plea bargain and got four. Um, so I was out in two, but that was long enough for me. That was, that wasn't good. That was for kidnapping. Yeah. And what was that sentence like? Was that adult prison this time? Yeah, that we started, a different ball game. Yeah, uh, that was Belmarsh, um, high high down. Then I ended up at ISIS, and yeah, there was lots of challenges there. Um, but again, I didn't. I mean, I did the odd thing wrong, but I didn't let the screws see that I did anything wrong. Um, but I had to deal with certain situations to try and not look like you know a, a pushover mm -hmm. but i never got caught or in any trouble there so i got like the gym orderly job and once i got that it was um that that really helped pass the time got myself a nice six pack and that and then thought i'm gonna get out of here and and do all the things that these people said that i couldn't do what was that like when you think you're gonna get a 12 shoved up your ass <sighs> fucking scary <laughs> ain't no double figures anything over that it's just a different ball game oh yeah i mean it's horrible and that fear and, and not sleeping every night and being in that cold lonely place worrying about you know family and all them all the mental stuff going through your head you know you've got to deal with you know some horrible people in there anyway but i think the uh the mind games was the worst who was it being away from the kids yeah it's horrible you know um and i didn't want them to visit me in there so we just spoke on the phone uh they, they never knew that i was in there so what did you do when you came out i came out um because it was the ex that made the allegations um she tried to get custody of the kids but they sussed her out and they went to live with my parents because she wasn't fit to have them so when i came out i had to go for a lot of assessments to prove that i was a good dad until i could actually have them like unsupervised and stuff yeah how hard does that having to go to supervised visits yeah it's horrible you know you've got to see your kids go at the end and they're not they don't know what's going on and they're crying and you're in a contact center and someone's watching you and yeah, that's that wasn't good times. Yeah, it's not different for prison, is it? No, not really, no. So what did you try to do with your life once she came out? Well, she, the, the girl that I was with, I always tried to make it work for the sake of the kids when we had kids. And I kept thinking, I kept making it work. But every time I tried to leave her, I got weak and went back because she's begging me and she knew what, to, what she was doing. And I was just like, right, I'll make it work for the kids. But then it never changed. And I was actually abusing that relationship. You know, I've been stabbed in that relationship. Lots of crazy shit there. Um, and then, you know, constantly put down, told I got a tiny penis, <laughs> um, told that I was really ugly. And it, it actually, I was actually started to believe her. Um, so, you know, I, I then met uh, this, this guy that I got on with from the estate, uh, Jaden, who became a best friend. He was a bisexual guy. Nothing ever happened there, but I learned a lot from him. He taught me about being open and understanding like everyone, every gender and all that sort, that sort of stuff. And said, you know, first of all, let's have a look then. I was like, oh, fucking hell. All right, then, mate. So I eventually got it out. And he's like, that is not small, Oliver. Are you fucking crazy? And then I was like, really? Is it not? And for a while, I didn't believe. But eventually, then I started to believe and get in the confidence. And he got me set up on a shoot. 
and that was terrifying being on my first sort of set you know a camera guy there he was a big bald irish man he was quite scary before i get my dick out in front of him <laughs> <laughs> and and start fucking and that was terrifying and obviously it shriveled up and i was like oh for fuck's sake <laughs> what is this so i'm taking all the different pills now and once it got there you know but the the, the girl was nice she was like, it's okay, baby. I've seen the pictures. It gets bigger. <laughs> and then once I got going, it was fine. And that was your, what age were you? Um, that was, um, what age was that? That was when I just got out. Um, so no, that's the first porn I'd done was, what year was it? So I would have got out in 2018, I think it was. So four years ago? Yeah. Um, so were you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> so how's that kid from the streets and gangs to then? Porn star, but it was never an ambition it was never a thing I'm going to be a porn star no um, I mean people used to say to me look you're doing it all anyway because they knew I used to sleep with a lot of girls and I was a you know a player and mm -hmm. I, you know, I was quite good like that with the girls with the ladies they say and um, they said you might as well get paid for it but it, was, it wasn't until I got the confidence to actually do it it's a whole different ball game you know like going up to another yeah. man having a fight and then that it was. It seemed like that was scarier when I first mm -hmm. started doing it. You know. Did you enjoy the first scene, or was it? Is it hard because there's cameras there, there's concentration? Oh, it's fucked. horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um. It was. It was like an laminate flooring like this, and I was sweating. I was. I was butt naked, but sweating, <laughs> and I was slipping in my own sweat. I had to keep cutting. I'd have bent over the um the sofa, but I kept slipping all across the floor. That kept keep wiping the floor down. I was just a dripping mess. <laughs> How much did you get for that? Uh, mm. One fifty. <laughs> How long were you there? I was there for fucking six hours because I couldn't get the cum shot. <laughs> did you feel right that this is the career path then? then, then? Um, no, um, but I just thought it's something that I could do in my spare time. I was still doing my decorating and plastering um, and this was just something that I thought I could do, which I was doing anyway, but get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And how, how does it snowball from there then? From what, sorry? So how does it snowball from that first scene to then be doing OnlyFans, orgies, escort yeah. and fucking, you, yeah. now you're seeing a porn star that like, yeah it's um, just went <laughs> mental from the last four years at night yeah it's kind of blown up i didn't think this would happen especially yeah. with a big porn star like that one of the biggest in the country i mm -hmm. didn't ever think that that would be my soulmate that's the first person that i feel like i've ever had the ultimate connection with and she is like my twin like we're you know we're so compatible and we've, i've never had anyone that's connects on, on so many different levels like that do you find it easier going with a porn star because then they can understand you well, I because would, you had imagine, but people misunderstand everybody. Everybody's misunderstood. Yeah. Porn stars and that as well. They're they're kind of looked down on as sleazy and, yeah. and bad and this and that. But I've got many friends in the porn industry and they're fucking hundred percent. Yeah. They're fucked up in the head, but so am I. Yeah. People think I'm doing great, but I'm fucking loopy. Yeah. I'm crazy cunt. All like, my best friends are fucked up. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't matter late. what your job is. Yeah. Like people to be doing something that you enjoy or try to make a crust, then so be it. Stop yeah. fucking judging. Like, yeah. nobody's get, as long as you're not harming anyone, be who you want to be and do what you want to do. But when you meet a porn star, then, like I says earlier, like, I can't handle somebody liking my bird's photo. Yeah. I think, who's that cunt thing he yeah, is? That, is he trying to shag me. my bird's me. man? That, to then getting fucking sessions with your bird shagging each other, get, she's getting shagged, you're shagging yeah. birds. Like, how, do you, how does that ex become an acceptance? Well, yeah, I, I was the same as, as that. Mm -hmm. I never thought that this would happen. I never thought it would be with her. But it's, I mean, she doesn't sleep with guys. Um, and I find... That her, better? Yeah, I find, I, I said to her, um, well, I mean, we'll get to that later on, I suppose, about mm -hmm. how we first met and, and, and fell in love and stuff. But I never said, you can't do this and can't do that. I just said, but I can't be with a porn star that's taking all these different dick. Mm -hmm. um, and, she, and she said, I don't want no other dick. I, I just want you. So we go with trans women and women and she's she's happy with that um and she made that decision and i said but if you want it other guys then don't be in this relationship that's down to you yeah. she made them decisions um so yeah i mean i'm, I'm happy with her to do what, what she does and, and, and you and that and is that an attraction do you ever think but do you ever get angry I, I used, I mean, there's been some time where I thought, ah, oh, they've got a good connection. Is, is that going to fucking yeah. be better than our connection? And then you get the abandonment issues kick in where you think you'll get kicked to the side? Yeah, that we both had that at first. <clears throat> but then on the times that it's us and it's out, off the set and I realise how well we fuck, mm -hmm. I, I know, and we, we, you know, when you just know and you, you believe someone 100%, I know that that connection and what we do off set can never be topped. And I, I wouldn't imagine it would ever be topped. So. See, when you're shagging birds in that on set, do, is that, 
can you ever connect with them or is it just a job where you become blank sometimes it's it feels like that it's just a job and i'm relying on the pills to keep it hard because you get a lot of arrogant porn stars that think their shit don't stink but we are just open and friendly and we're just trying to make everyone feel comfortable and happy and not used by some of these big companies like they do um but sometimes yeah it's pleasure i think yes yeah, bird's gorgeous um we've got a good connection here and it's i'm getting paid and it's it's good fun mm -hmm. How big is it? Because I, I, you started following me, I followed you in the first video, come up with you with your fucking dick in your hand. Yeah. I don't know, as a big dick, mate, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, How big is it? It's only it's only about eight inches. You can't just say only eight inches for the guys that are watching my four-inch pecker, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but it, it honestly is, it honestly is. Um, I think because um, someone said it's, I can't remember the exact figure, but it's something about the, the, the G, it's only, a, what, a couple of inches in? Mm -hmm. So it really is how you use it. Because, you know, I've, had, I've seen videos of Sophie and, you know, she's having much bigger cocks than mine and you know at first i was like am i going to compete with this she's had shit loads of guys you know big guys in the industry that done all these game bangs she's not going to be interested in me and i never believed it would go any further but I, when i worked with sophie it was more like i found her in line thought right she's one of the biggest i'm going to see if she'll do a, a shoot with me but it would it would just be a shoot it would boost my numbers it would get me some extra only fans people i never thought then she would contact me the next day so i didn't bother contacting her but she contacted me and then it all went from there. So I, I didn't believe that this would be good enough, but now yeah. I know that it is. I think guys will feel a wee bit secure saying that now it's only a couple inches in where you can hit the yeah. G spot. Yeah, so remember that. For all you <laughs> small dick guys out there, yeah. man, you're, you're okay, man, yeah. you're doing fine. But how... If not, use your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> your tongue. How do you, how do you go from making pornos to then the sex life in the house, though? Like, is it different? Is it different? Yeah, it is. In what sense? we uh we make love and that is completely different you know when we're on some of these sets it's like hardcore slamming and you know being aggressive and was saying that she does like that offset as well but i mean with with sophie i give her that deep loving passionate sex and there's just certain things i'm not doing to the other girls because i want her to feel special i mean there is as i say some connections but we just have there's just something different with us and it's it's, it's just special and what do you take to keep it hard um I prefer the jelly Camagras. Um, obviously, there's all different types of Viagras, but the jelly seem to be better because the the blue pills or the or the black ones, which are the strong stronger ones, they can sometimes make your head go fucked. Yeah. Do you feel as if it does affect you mentally, taking I, so many pills? I think it really is a whole mental thing because sometimes mm -hmm. I've taken five pills and I'm not comfortable in a situation. Still, like recently, and it it won't work. So it really is all about the environment and the mental side of things. Can you get it up without pills now? Yeah, I can, yeah. When me and Sophie fuck, I don't have to use pills. That's mad that you can take five. Yeah. People take half. Yeah. On, on set, sometimes I've been like, why aren't it fucking working? You've got all these girls that have come. Um, you've got, you know, the camera guy that's been paid for and you're thinking, shit, I, you know, I've got this scene, I won't get paid unless this is going to work. The pressure's on, you're sweating out in the back, trying to knock one out and it's just not, get, not getting hard. So what happens, like, after you take, if you take a couple and then you've done your business, but you're still walking about the streets, how the fuck do you hide, hide an, an eight inch cock? <laughs> you have to just tuck it up <laughs> into the waistline <laughs> up there. <laughs> but how, what's the longest you've been hard for? Um, we've we've had we've gone to party after party after party. We've continued it once the people were worn out, and that's been up to about four days. Um, how yeah. the fuck do you keep the stamina? I'm I'm very fit. I used to play professional football. I still play semi pro football. Um, and I'm I'm very fit. Mate, I'm fucked after two minutes, mate. <laughs> oh, Serious, yeah. mate. I'm 38 now. Get a blowjob and a cuddle, mate. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm happy, mate. <laughs> like, you make my sex life seem fucking pish. Oh, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? But like, I ain't happy, bro. Oh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but but it's each to their own. Obviously, I've been with girls that's got a high sex drive. I've been with girls who just not asked. But like, yeah. people are different, but. How do you find the balance of it? How, when do you know like, to be just shagging constantly? Like, do you, does it never tire you out? Oh, eventually, yeah. I'm, I'm fucked. But, you know, if we, as I say, if we went to, when we're on our, like, our second sex party and we're in London and then we see another one, we're both like, so what do you reckon this, that these ones? And we're like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go there. And the party's on tonight. So we, we, we live for the moment. And we want to, this party won't be there tomorrow. So let's go there. So then if like that one is getting a bit, you know, tired at the part at this party, and it's mm -hmm. it's dying out a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're already making the arrangements for the next place, so I will deliberately not come, um, so that I can continue going. Because once I do my big come short at the end, 
then it is a struggle to get it back up. I'm just once one big one at the end. Yeah, that makes me feel better, bro. Yeah. Because I'm once, mate, and I'm sleeping for two days, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sex parties like? Um, you go to some and they're really sleazy. So we try and avoid them ones and there's a lot of like bad shit going on in there. Um, you know, like the uh, different certain drugs that we, we try and avoid. Like what? Like the crystal meth, um, things people, like that. People taking that in them? Yeah, I got tricked into taking that. Um, I went to a place um, and there was these beautiful girls there. And she went, come in, I'll blow this in your face. And I was like, all right, fuck it, yeah, you know. And then she blew it all in my mouth. And I was just like, oh, what is this? And I just went back on the bed feeling super horny. Um, anyway, once I'd had that first hit, she was saying, it's, it's Tina, Tina. Uh, she was like an Asian girl. She said, Tina, Tina. I was like, all right, yeah, fuck it, give me some more of that. So we was just hitting this thing. And then, you know, a few days later, once I come out of there and I started feeling this crash, I was like, what the fuck was that? So I'm looking up online and realised it was meth, but I didn't actually know what it was. How many people are at these sex parties? Um, it all depends. I mean, sometimes, because a lot of the girls that come over from different countries, like the Brazilian girls and the Asian girls, they they all get like apartments, like renting apartments, and they've all got like a room. So this particular one, there was uh, eight different girls, and there's all escorting from these rooms, and they would charge guys. But when I go on there, I would just chat them up and say, look, if you want me, I'm coming around for free, I'm not paying. Mm -hmm. So I would just chat, chat them up and go around there and fuck. Um, but sometimes, if, I, if if all different guys start coming in that was paying, I'd be like, you know, I'm not up for this. We were either going to a room and do it just us, but I'm not I'm not getting part of these other dudes. I don't know who they are. Yeah. Um. You know. So it was just it was just if the if it was if the mood was set how I wanted it, and it was mm -hmm. just like me and the girls, then I would do it. Yeah. So with that, bro. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> want all these, these these old guys come in that were paying. I was like, no, no, no. Do you get that? But uh, is that a lot? Of, can be a lot of sleaziness, like old fat men just. Yeah. You wouldn't want in. any of them shagging your butt, nah, man. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Do you know what I mean? Fuck that. Like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But how? So how do you manage to maintain it? Like to. Like you see, you still keep fit and healthy, but you're taking tablets. That like, when you're doing porn and OnlyFans, like, what's the difference then? Obviously, porn you're in front of the camera, OnlyFans is behind the camera. But has it become just so much your job? You actually forget what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do enjoy what I do most of the time. There has been a few situations that I've just had to, you know, grin and bear and get through. Um, but most of the time, I do enjoy it. But going back to the Viagras. I have slowed up on them because I didn't want to become dependent and then not be able to get up at all because that would fucking kill me. Yeah, but so, that could potentially happen the more you abuse it. Huh? Yeah, so I have slowed up on them um, and there's a few natural products that I, I now use. Um, so I try and keep things natural and, and as I said, when I'm at, uh, in bed with Sophie, I don't, I don't use them and we're not fucking every day like we're used to now. We'll space it out, maybe do one or two shoots a week. Yeah, so it's not as extreme? No, nah, yeah. What's the most budget you've fucked in a day? Um, probably about 10 yeah fucking hell man it's going to be 20 uh, on the 18th of this month what's happening we're picking up a motor and it's being wrapped um, and we made a joke to the guys but I, whenever we say something we mean it and I don't want to let them down so we're going to come back with 20 girls like, no nah, you won't I won't that's a fucking will so we're going to get 20 porn stars go back there in the motorhome and then we'll all go and fuck in the motorhome <laughs> If you're looking for a camera, man, make easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just me and 20 birds. You can, I'll share them with you, mate. I'm not greedy. <laughs> you know, I've only need one, mate. But uh, see when you like, how many pornos have you made? Oh, I honestly don't. I've lost count now, you know, hundreds. Um, yeah, loads. Do you still go to work though, kind of enjoying it, or does it still, does it become draining in the end? Um, I enjoy it more now Why? because. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff before was like for mainstream companies mm -hmm. and they're the ones you want to avoid they're the ones that are abusing the girls they don't pay them a lot and sometimes they well, they won't even air the footage but they've these old guys that you know like brothers a very big thingy mm -hmm. uh, company all over Pornhub they pretty much run it they'll get the young girls in they'll fuck them and then they'll never air their video why? because they just want to fuck the young girls and just basically use and abuse them so me and Sophie have set up Sins Productions which is our own thing where we, we treat the girls fairly and say that if this is what you want to get into, you know, we'll pay you well and we'll look after you and we'll basically try and guide you in the right direction. Do you see a lot of dirtiness in the porn industry? Yeah. Because I've had many, I've had a few porn stars on, some of them love it, some of them fucking hate it. Some yeah. of them try to expose it because of some of the scenes where they feel as if they've been victims, they feel as if they've been abused. Of because course. Because 
and it's fucking difficult because if somebody loves their job and then somebody's against it, you can understand. But like you say, there is dirtiness and seediness in that industry. Of course, yeah. How hard is it then to try and make a living from it? Um, if you're stepping away from the big hitters yeah. to pay the most? Well, I mean, yeah, it's harder. Um, and I knew that <clears throat> I couldn't do all the other stuff, like selling drugs and all that shit I was doing. And then I had my decorating business, which just wasn't quite doing it. And I really like I could make more from that. So I, at times, you know, like I say, you have to just grin and bear it and get the job done. But now that me and Sophie, we select who we want to work with, it's, it becomes a lot easier because we build up a connection with these people. And if they're not arrogant and they're not horrible, then then we work with them. And you get that choice now because you're becoming bigger names. Yeah, we choose now who we work with. And if we get a bad vibe from someone, then we don't work with them. How does that, like, so what do you do when you, because you're both escort as well? I, I did escort, but all my clients are men, so I knocked it on the other day later. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> did Soph ever tell you to stop doing what you were doing? Um, or does she not mind you being with men or women? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't go with men. Um, I've, I've, got, I've got a couple of blowjobs on the set and felt really mm. uncomfortable, and that was just horrible. But I've done it for the money. But I, I said to her, I don't want to make a name for, for myself doing something I don't want to do. I said, so yeah. I can't do that anymore. And with the escorting, second customer comes the first first customer guy comes over i was like hang on a minute i've got into this game thinking that all these birds are going to come around and pay me to fuck them it doesn't work like that it's the other way it's the men that are paying the women to do it mm -hmm. so um it was literally just guys that are ringing i, I, I tried it a couple of times and, and on the second one i was like, I'm, I'm done mate take your money and fuck off out my place yeah where's the what's the most you've made on set um only about 600 quid what's the longest you've been on set um about three days three four days how much hours of footage do you get from that? <sighs> Shitloads. Um, How um, much of it gets used, though? Probably less than half, to be honest. Because um, there's lots of different stopping and starting in there and trying to get, get certain angles and execute the the best shots, you know? How do you deal with that, though? Is it the Viagra just help with that if they're stopping and it's telling you to start again? Does it not just kind of just fuck up with emotion? Yeah, I mean, you know, during these sort of sessions, there's people that are dropping out and saying they, they can't do it anymore. So then they, what the camera guys will do is they'll make that group scene and they'll use what they got out of that. And then say there was me and Sophie and another two and then we'd go out of that. And, and if, it, if it's all dropping like flies and you make loads of different films out of it, so you've got a one-on-one uh, -on -one there, that was a group one earlier, and you can make loads of films out of one, uh, one day of shooting. What's the camera man in that like? Some are all right, some make you feel uncomfortable. See the bastards? Yeah. yeah, you would get that, yeah, wouldn't you? you? Get if you're that, a perfect yeah. man, that's a fucking yeah. perfect job for you. Touch the girls and that. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You have to throw a few of them off and because mm -hmm. they're, they're overstepping the line. What's the girls like you work with? Um, Do you now, see a lot of sadness in a lot of people in that industry as well? Yeah. So me and Sophie, we, we talk to the people, uh, to the girls, uh, all the trans women, and they've they've had hard times, and some of them don't want to be in this, and we actually try and talk them out of it if they don't want to do this, but they they see this as easy money to them especially the escorting mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, and, they, and they, they feel like they're kind of trapped. Yeah. It's all becomes the usual suspects from the stripping to then the escorting to then the porn. Like, yeah. It's the same, it is the same kind of steps in it with people going, like yeah. I say, I've got so many great friends from the porn industry and they're fucking good people, man. But you can't, I can see a, a lot of sadness in some of them where yeah. would you change your career's path if you could change, make it all better when you were 16, like make different decisions? Yeah. I mean, if I, when I was at Crystal Palace, if I would have stayed with them, then I could be earning a lot more for playing football. Um, I used to fight as well. Maybe I could, that could have gone somewhere. I was good at both of them things, um, you know, but being a porn star, I thought that would be just as good. Mm -hmm. But it's not as good as what people think. How long were you at Palace for? Um, two years. What age did you stop? Um, I think that was just before I went away uh, for the first time at about 17. Is that what fucked your career? Um, yeah, yeah. It's sad that that we have a regret, bro, and that. Like, that's a horrible thing when everybody's got potential. No matter what age, like, we've all still got potential in your 30s, 40s. Like, even when you get into the pub, people give it, I could have been a contender, I could have been this, I could have yeah. been that. But you're only in your 40s, you know what you've done wrong. Like, yeah. Fucking do something now and make of something of your life. Yeah, I'm not one of them guys that I could have been the next Ronaldo. Yeah. I'm just saying that's where I was. Um, maybe they would have released me, but. It, it seems like it was based on taking drugs and, and going out. As I said, once my, my nan died, I went off the rails and I started doing everything and it, it just, I let myself down. What position do you play? Centre-back. 
What um, what did you box as well? Yeah, I used to do a bit of Thai boxing. Uh, never took it any further. Um, it wasn't like I had a professional fight, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But everyone said, you know, really good. I've never lost a one-on-one -on -one fight and kept my face quite pretty, I think. Um, so, yeah, um, that's something that I'd always think of going back to. But now I say, you know, you've got these people that have dedicated their whole lives to that. I, you know, I can't dedicate time to it. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to train as well as them and that's that's a dangerous thing to do yeah. do you judge like your 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 cock on other people's in that as well people's maybe nine inches ten inches does that get you insecure <laughs> at, at first when i first come into the industry i was a bit like you know oh fucking hell you know but but now i know what i can do and i know that i i please these women better than guys that are bigger than me so yeah, fucking again to you little it. guys <laughs> <laughs> don't worry <laughs> what's the biggest out there um <clears throat> the biggest was a guy of 13 inches fucking hell yeah so I, I always thought it was the the big black african guys that had the biggest cocks that's mm -hmm. what i heard but this guy was was a white guy and he had a 13 inch cock so but i yeah as i say that's much bigger but fuck it yeah that's <laughs> cool. but is it happy you know what i mean can't <laughs> yeah how is it doing scenes with your missus but like, obviously it's changing now and she's going through her transition and she's doing things to help work on the relationship but when she tells her story and stuff as well and if you if you, do you ever watch old videos or would no, you just no, drive no. Your, off your nut? Yeah, I don't like watching her, her old yeah. videos. So how do you, do you just block that out then? Yeah, and we, we say, mm. you know, I've got a past, she's got a past, and and we accept that, you know. How do you accept that? Because, you know, whatever she's done before me was before me, and that it wasn't like she went and cheated or went and done all these things. That was, that was her before. Mm -hmm. And everything that's happened in our lives, where we are now, has made us who we are now, yeah. and that's what got us together. And do you have an agreement then, just we'll agree on it if we're going to do something where it's a mutual agreement that you're going to do something and it's not a case of I'm away to fucking do this or you're away to have that's exactly what happens yeah. is she okay like, if you're away shagging these 20 birds that um, seems to turn her on she's one of them <laughs> yeah that's what I'm saying so yeah. she's ha just happy yeah she just seems a happy soul mate and everything yeah. she's been through and no, it's, she's, she's it's brilliant. fucking mad but yeah um, you know she, she does she says that she's hard work and that but I mean so am I um, as I say we're both like identical twins you know maybe she comes out and and she gets a bit more emotional but i will be her rock but then she'll be my rock as well um mm -hmm. and i've never opened up to anyone as much as i've opened up to her and i've actually fully been crying and opened up and, and telling all my pain but i've never done that to anyone i've never been able to my dad's always said you're a pussy if you ever cry and he's i've never i've always never let anything out until i was with sophie how is the other guys in the the porn industry um, can you get conversations with them with okay yeah. or do you see a lot of sadness with them as well yeah um, I've <clears throat> got a good gay friend in the industry um, he's he's been through his struggles you know about the whole gay thing and the shallow people that judge him for that um, I've got um, another guy in, in the industry that, that kind of um, he was there supporting me when I first got into it giving me advice there is good people in it but then there's also wankers as well they yeah. just want to put you down and, and, and make them out to be better than you how do you deal with that um, the best thing to do is to block it because when we've tried to uh, write messages back on social media, it always gets twisted. So now we just we will have a we'll do a video eventually, um, and we will just air it to everyone and answer to them all, all in one go, rather than get caught up in all this bitchiness that goes on. Is there a lot of envious when you try and go independent? Like the people try and shut you down. Yeah. How does it work? People try and <clears throat> shut you down. People want what you've got. Um, and and people people will, will try it on with you, you know. And then even people that I thought were my friends, um, I, they just want they just want it from you. Oh, come in and get me some birds and get some porn stars around. Let, let's do this and do that. And obviously I try and help out my mates, but they're not all cut out for it. Yeah. Um, and then you know when it doesn't work out for them, then they then they get funny with you. Have you still got mates of the the past? I've probably got two or three friends. Yeah. What did they say? Um, they they it's not for them. Um, I've tried to get a few of them involved, but it's just it's not for them. Nah. nah are they happy with you though do they support you uh, I don't, I, to be honest I don't really have anyone um, you know it might be the odd phone call here and there or mm -hmm. a quick beer but we're just me and so we're always on the go I'm always trying to better ourselves and make yeah. money and, and do things um, you know it seems a lonely job does it become yeah. lonely yeah it's sad that as well isn't it like part of you loves it but part of you it becomes tiresome yeah. Like, do you feel as if you have to do it because it's the only thing you know now? Well, yeah. Now, now I, you know, my businesses have been left for for so long. I probably wouldn't get much work, and I wouldn't want to go back to that sort of money. So I guess I am kind of forced. But this is why we're trying to do the mainstream thing. 
and all the girls that we are trying to help in the industry, the young girls that are strippers and escorts, if we can take them with us mainstream and help people, if our, if our show takes off and we can start doing well, then they won't have to do this sort of stuff. Do you think there should be things put in place for protection of the male and females in that industry? So it doesn't really seem to be anything. Nah. It's kind of just forgot about, like, I think 80% of the stuff that's watched online is porn. Yeah. Like, it's fucking nuts. Like, it's such a thriving business, but do you ever just feel like you're just a pawn in, in the game? You're just used? Yeah, of Go course. for six hours, do this, do that. that. But that's why me and Sophie <clears> now, now that we've got our own thing, we, we say and do what we want to do and you know, and we get these girls on, we only do what they're comfortable with. We don't force them to do anything they don't want to do, unlike yeah. the bigger companies. Yeah, you've got your kids now, so they're at that age. Like, how much is that a worry for you? Yeah, it is a worry because <clears throat> they're starting to use social media a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I uh, I keep, my poor name is, is different to my name. Mm -hmm. So my kids have only got my my real name um, on that link to their account. So they don't have any access to my porn. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they've seen any of my porn. Um, you know, they know that daddy does some um, adult work, which is, uh, they just think it's photo shoots with some clothes off. Yeah. Um, and then there's modeling shoots with clothes on. And I've got them modeling shoots and they, and they love all that being on the camera and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I've just said that some people do different types of modeling. Um, but you know, if you want to do this type of modeling, then you can do that. And they like doing their photo shoots. Because obviously Sophie's son has kind of took a step back. Do you ever feel that could be the case when your daughter's maybe 14, 15, 16? Like, would they just maybe feel a bit embarrassed? Of course, that could happen um, once or if they find out, which they probably <clears> will. <throat> um, there's always that. And then them problems for them at school. But at the same time, I've only just tried to, you know, have the money to support them. And now I don't see what else I'd do. Unless we can make it mainstream, then the porn would all die out. Yeah, I think for a man though, it's not as as bad. Like, if it was a man, if it's your dad, or, like, obviously, it's not as bad. Like, you're not really going to get much stick for your if your dad, like young boys, like your dad does. It's like, I think yeah. it's more your mum. Your mum, yeah. if, you, if it's you're always at, been like that. Though, yeah, it? if it's your son and, and it's your mum, then it, it's totally different. I believe that. Like, <clears throat> like you would feel more effect from it your dad you think yeah yeah it's always been like yeah. Dad, daddy's fucking birds but yeah. then mummy's getting fucked but and it's, it's always it's seemed worse yeah. yeah how when you talk about mainstream what is that plan well <clears throat> we've actually made a few films which don't have sex in them and we actually have been told from a few directors that we're both pretty good mm -hmm. so that's what we're pushing for um because we can both act i sing and rap mm -hmm. um sophie sings so there's a lot of um, talent there without having to do the porn. So obviously we're doing the porn now until that gets found. But when we get our song out, if, uh, if that went really well and we got some other parts in, in films that were non-sexual, mm -hmm. then, then maybe the porn could sort of fuck off. Yeah, why the fuck not? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Why not? Like you've got to, to change the plans and change the vision and go after it. Like you have done what you can to try and stable your life it's trying to stable the demons yeah. if you've got vision to go do you know what we can do this we can do that like she was saying that she was an A student and all these fucking universities yeah. and colleges wanted her like that's what's the frustrating thing about human beings because we've all got so much potential and that goes for anybody watching whether you're driving a van or in prison like you can make changes and I'll preach this shit to the day I die like yeah. you can better your life you can quit the drink you can quit the drugs you can quit that shit relationship with that shitty job and, and do something more and really go after it it's not easy because when you make changes when your life's full of madness and chaos it's difficult when you start making changes because you become a bit it's boring but You've got to understand that sometimes it's not actually boring. Sometimes you're just actually at peace. So know the difference. When, yeah. you, when your life's full of chaos, you're just used to it being full of chaos. But when you actually step back and come out yeah. of that fucking madness, you think, man, oh, it's a bit boring now. But it's not. That's you just at, at peace, peace like man. That, yeah. like, because <clears throat> I speak to so many people, man, and I don't give a fuck what you've done in your life or the mistakes you've made. Like I've, People can transform into fucking beautiful human beings but it's still yeah. a struggle man like it can't be easy i'd imagine being in the porn game with a porn star like the comments and that because i struggle with negative comments and i think cunt if i yeah. see you i'll fucking strangle you <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. like, but that's just the way of the world like, how do you deal with the negatives yeah so like sophie gets upset and, and cries and stuff and <laughs> we both um think she's probably saying 
they tried to when I gave Sophie the, all I done was gave her the strength to not be in that abusive relationship mm -hmm. when she finally stood up to the the woman that she was working with Rebecca um, we got a lot of abuse and she tried to paint my past all over the internet and said that I was abusing Sophie and, I, and I'm, I'm forcing her to be in this relationship and this that and the other and there's a lot of shit that went online and we're starting to overcome that now because the facts lie out there you know she went behind Sophie's back and and done a lot of things but the facts are out there um and as time has gone on people are starting to see these facts because we have put them out there um as i say to, to big audiences and not just answering back to all these fucking idiots that are sat at home all day doing nothing yeah the best thing to do is just block them so we block them out and then when we do um things just like this or when sophie does one video for every one of her fans we will say right you know this is how it is and we'll just do one answer and we don't get caught up in all in all that shit. You can't because it consumes you, man. It's too negative. That's it. Life is too short and precious to be wasting it on negativity. Yeah. But we're human, man. We're all sensitive little beings where we do get affected. We yeah. don't give a fuck who you are, how tough you are, how much you want to block it out. Words can sting, man. Of course, They're yeah. They're fucking powerful, man. I, I would rather take a crack to the jaw than yeah. being abused fucking for exactly. ages. Look, because you can come back from a fucking punch yeah. You can't come back from mental abuse if it's consistent because then, yeah. like you say, somebody's saying you've got a small dick or sofa saying you're not good enough or you're fat. She's went anorexic. You're yeah. judging your eight-inch dick against fucking... No, I mean, that's a monster. Like, yeah. And you're, in your mind, you're thinking, I'm not going to... Like, you become ashamed and embarrassed. Yeah. Like, words are fucking painful, man. Yeah, mate, yeah. It's fucking horrible, that's man. That's what I was saying with the ex. You know, it was her words that, that, that you know, that, that made me actually believe it and they really hurt. And then... But then it got to that point where I was like, right, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do certain things and change. And it, it's still to this day, if me and Sophie are down, we'll always get back up and keep going. And that's what I always, I always say to her, you know, like when she's going through this thing with her breast at the minute, keep going, and you know, we we'll get through this. We never give up. How do you prepare for a porn scene? Um, I will. If me and Sophie have sex a few days previously, I just won't come. So it's kind of built up in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll get there, just start to relax, feel comfortable. Sometimes have a little shot, um, you know, just to take the, the edge off. Um, and then, yeah, uh, get down to it. We'd, we'd already have planned what sort of scenes we want to do, what clothes we're wearing, like what the theme is going to be. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just, we'll just get straight down to it. Normally within an hour of, of being there. What's the best video you've ever done? The best bird. The best video. Um, is there one you know? Is it because it's still a craft that she had worked? Have you ever walked away and done fucking hell when I was good there? I'd, I'd say it's got to be Sophie because... You're going to say that because you know she's going to watch this. Yeah, yeah. so bastards. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> the cameras are off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, it it, it was. Um, I I actually took a penis injection that day because I knew how big she was in the in the game. So I thought, right, this can't fail. So I jabbed up, and it was when you have the injection, it's 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 the biggest erection I've ever had. And then we just done all of our scenes. And it was one of them scenes, because um, I was with my, my brother, um, and I was like, she came downstairs and said, I need one more scene. It's a custom video for one of my fans uh, who wants to do it. And then she sort of looked at me and gave me the eye. And then my brother was about to say to me, I was like, I've got this. So then with that scene was the scene that I went all out and, and showed her what I could give. And then that... That's I'm, what I'm, she fell in love with you. That's what she fell in love with you, yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so what the fuck's the injection? It's called Cavajet and you jab it in at the base of the penis, avoiding veins. Some people hit their veins and had blood bleed outs. Um, yeah. But I, I've studied this shit and watched a lot of videos and I've got it in the right place and thankfully it gave me what I needed. And you've done that yourself? Yeah. How much was that shit? Um, 40 quid. Is that it? Yeah. Fuck, fuck your Viagra, mate. Yeah. I don't start injecting the dick. Yeah. <laughs> but again, don't you can become really dependent okay. on that. So that would just have to be a rare treat. Do you, if you've got a two-inch cot, you probably make it four with us. <laughs> <laughs> you just use it once a month. <laughs> uh, is there, did, what about the other guys in sets and stuff? Do they, do they struggle after maybe being in the industry 10 yeah. years, 15 years? Every uh, guy in the industry has struggled at some point and not got it up. Um, and what do you feel then? I'd imagine any craft you're going into, if you can't f do what you're set out to do, man, does that affect you? Yeah, I mean, you, you can be really embarrassed in that moment. There's been scenes where we've just had to, me and like a load of guys about to just spunk over someone. And then if you're one of the only ones in that group or the only one in that group that can't get it up, it's, it's like, fuck it, what's going on there? It's embarrassing. Or if it's me and, and a group of girls and I can't get it up, it's like, what the fuck's going on here? And 
it can be it can be very embarrassing, you know, and you just want the, the ground to swallow you up in that moment. How some of the guys get loads of spunk? Uh, what, what, do they take anything for that? Like sometimes we, the old videos I used to watch back in the day, man, yeah. people were fucking covered. So and I'm thinking, is that some camera shot? Is that somebody standing at the back just fucking <laughs> squishing out something in a bottle? Well, there is tricks. Is there? Yes. Yeah, so Can you fake it? Like be f- like faked? Yeah, I I don't. I edge uh, <clears throat> sometimes for days and it fucking hurts. So if you get a cock ring and you pull your balls and your cock through it, mm-hmm. so it's fucking tight. Sometimes your nuts go blue after a few days where it's been on. And and sometimes you have to pull that band off, let, let them stop swelling for a minute and then put them back on 20 minutes later and carry on with the session. But that, again, when you've got a, a cock ring around your, your, your balls and your cock, again, that keeps it keeps it hard as well it traps the blood in mm-hmm. so we use that and then all the edging over the days that cum shot is then fucking big when it comes out because i, I had george leo on who's a good friend scottish porn star but she said the porn stars are tested relentless yeah for stds and yeah, aids you have and all to do that, that. Yeah, yeah. as a clean industry like. yeah but have you ever thought fucking hell that like, how ha- like just making a career change because it has become on top and you're thinking what the fuck is going on yeah, um, you know, as I say, like if if I couldn't, but even, well, at first it was like, what if this this stopped working? I'm fucked for now. Mm-hmm. Like, it might be too late to go back into certain things. Again, that's why we we want to try and do the mainstream. But if you can't get it up, you can use the injections. They are better than the tablets, and there is like a, a tube in that people put along the side of their cock. And when it's time to come, someone squeezes that. Oh, do they? So that is the trick. I've never done that, but that, mm-hmm. uh, people do use that in the industry when you see a lot of come. Yeah, who's the biggest in the UK? I'm not sure. Um, you, must, you must be up there now, eh? Yeah, I mean, Sophie has, has been in the game longer than me and she's got a much bigger following. <clears throat> the, the rate that I'm, I'm going up, because I've only been doing it since since I got out, but they went online. My Twitter profile was uh, October 2020. That's when it went live. So since then, I've gone up, to, I've got, got about 50,000, which is a good rate. And so, so For a man, anyway. Sorry? For a man. Yeah, it's a good following. Yeah, so that's going up quite a, quite a good rate, and compared to some porn stars that are, are, are bigger than me, they're saying that that's going up at a quicker rate to there. So I'm believing that I could I could uh, do quite well. But you must get a lot of CD bastards as well. The sofa not got a lot of fucking weird messages, oh, yeah. mate. But you know, it's, I can't go and fight them all or or do all this. Like yeah. you said, you want to just go and knock them out for some of the things they've said yeah. to make her cry. Mm-hmm. So I just have to comfort her and say that fuck them. Who the yeah. fuck are they? Ignore that. Let's keep doing our thing, babe. That's, and that's what they, I think she told yeah. you about our song as well. It's, Fuck it. Yeah, it's so. funny, man, because even though some of the girls are getting fucking tooled off four or five guys on set, mm. people think they're easy. They go out in the yeah. real world, mate, and they, they don't even acknowledge any cunt. Yeah, and they, these guys think that they can they Yeah, can they're mad it. sluts, and that's the yeah. mad thing, that, because they're not, they're genuinely not. I, yeah. I hosted the Porn Awards two or three years ago, uh, George Ayo, and uh, and that's what they were talking about, like, because they're quite... When you're a porn star, they were saying like you're just in a different bubble. But yeah, she had names for like myself or other people that's not in that industry. Like they because it's the only people who understand each other, so yeah. it feels normal. Because we actually came out that then people judge, people yeah. look down, yeah, they people do. try and make you feel bad. Do you know what I mean? But it's people's choices. Let people be cunts. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you find that hard when you're out in public or anything? That like, people look up must they must look. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I mean, I you know, know if I know him or I yeah. know her. Yeah, I mean, I've I've always been been judged for whatever reason anyway, whether it's when people were saying that I'm fucked in the head or whatever it, it may be, but we you just got to try and try and ignore it. And as I say, unless someone was to really invade my space, I will always try and defuse situation now rather than just smack someone in the face because then I will look like the bad one and I don't want to go back to jail and yeah. and and not be away from like Sophie and, and my kids you know they need me um, you lose everything yeah and you, you, just, I can't that's just not an option so I'll always say this I'm going to look get the fuck back you know or I'm going to have to defend myself and, and my family so when you're trying to kick on in life I've had it and I've tried to make strives to be better and do better and, and be a better guy like, I still make mistakes I still fuck up like, yeah. but when you try and change people do throw your past and you're in the face I still get it to this day but I couldn't give a fuck like, I haven't stopped so yeah. it's clear to see that it ain't going to phase me I yeah. keep kicking on I keep proving people wrong part of that makes me want to kick on because I kind of fuck you exactly. I ain't stopping I've never stopped I've controversial guests conversations I've never backed down never will yeah. and I've proved that time and time again I think people just kind of know now but Love it. how are you finding it like doing things then oh, he's been in prison or this and that how do you deal with that um, yeah well, it's made things harder mm-hmm. but there's all the people that I that I know 
I've gone into prison, come back out, and they're still doing the same thing. But I'm like Sophie, people that want to change and want to keep doing well and keep improving. Like you said, we always we all make mistakes, but we constantly keep going. And she's the, the strongest person that I know, other than myself, of course. And we just keep we just keep going. Talk about this rap song. Um, so when I was in jail, um, mm -hmm. I saw there was a, a poster on the wall which said, "Success is the best form of um, revenge." No, yeah, hang on. Success is the best form of revenge. Mm -hmm. So it started from there, and I started. I wrote all these songs in there, and then one of them was about being who you want to be, do what you want to do, say what you want to say, fuck it. And we, we, I started writing bits, and so we went. I've got parts of songs here, so we started to sort of put ideas together, and then we come out with this song, which is basically what we're all about and what we believe in, and what we try and say to other people. You know, you know, you do you, and don't worry about what anyone else says, and it's just a positive song like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe that this this could be quite a, a big song. Yeah, because listen, man, I know many boys in the rap scene who in and out of prison. Yeah, Jordan McCann and that is a good friend of mine. Yeah. That and he's they're doing what they can do to try and make an honest living. And it's hard because you're always tested when you come out. Because if you've got that temperament, you feel as if you need to step forward when somebody steps forward, but you don't. Stepping back and just fucking like you say, kill them with success. Yeah, that's the most painful thing. Like I say, yeah. people can recover from a punch. People can recover from certain things but they can't recover if they're envious about someone trying to be successful and you yeah. actually do it yeah. i know people are burning with me doing what i'm doing i know it's killing people yeah over the years my enemies have got weaker i've only got stronger mentally physically financially every fucking aspect of life i'm only getting stronger and i'm only going to get stronger and i'm a man who puts it into action i don't just talk shite in yeah. fact i do talk shite man but that's a lie but <laughs> i fucking I, I do I, when i say something i'm going to do it like I yeah. say, I ain't stopped in four years and I ain't going to stop because I'm going to strive for more. But doing that becomes more pressure. But like I say, you more sex scenes or more this or that because you're trying to provide, but it becomes tiresome. And then you kind of forget what happiness is because you're so caught up in trying to prove your doubters wrong and prove yourself right that you can be something. So it's a very thin line. It's a, it's a dodgy... I was just about to say, it's a very fine yeah, line. Yeah, to try and find a bit of balance like can you find balance in your life of madness because you talking and sophie's talking and your story that people are going that's fucking nuts but people get an understanding this is what my podcasts are for so people understand yeah and go why who they are like because we've all got a story everybody's yeah. got different jobs i could get someone down the stair who's working in a bar and get them up here and create a story yeah because we've all got something to give Oops. like where do you go from all that then from the porn industry just try and go on to mainstream like do you think you'll ever get a chance because of the background that you've yeah, got I, I believe we've got enough um talent there to to have opportunities in different places we've been knocked back a lot but as i say we're not going to give up we're going to keep pushing because because we believe we believe in what we do and, and we mm -hmm. you know we're hopeful mm -hmm. you can see sophie's very insecure about her body so how was it when the tits went uh, one of the it's fucking horrible when she got the sepsis and that and i am feeling her pain i've been every step of the way and it, it hurts me because she hasn't got the confidence and we've cancelled a lot of stuff I mean, the majority of our shoots have now been cancelled and and even in 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 our family life outside of work she, she's down a lot more than than normal of course and you know i'm just constantly there for her but it's it's, yeah. it's really hard how do you separate the two from family life to the fucking orgies and the sex scenes and the injecting the dick. Like, how do you, how do you separate them? Well, I actually said to Sophie, has, has anyone from your past actually taken you out on a date? And she's like, no, it's just it's always been that, or the the dad was just like a druggie or whatever it was. And I said, well, how about I start taking you some real cool places that I know? And I started doing things like that, and she started to see love outside of of what we do. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of that now, um, and that makes her happier. So we, we do that. Yeah, she genuinely does look happy though. Yeah, it's, and it's a good thing to see because, like you say, she's she has a very sensitive being, and when you listen to her story, you realise, man, it's such, it's such a fucking liberty. You've got daughters, I've got a daughter, same yeah. age. I couldn't think anything worse, mate. I would blast a cunt if he fucking yeah. even thought about looking at my daughter that wrong way. Uh, when I, when I, mean? I was hearing that earlier, as I say, I, it was just, yeah, it wasn't good. I was getting hot and and sweaty yeah, and flustered and shit. And it was just because she's saying that with her mum, and I was like no that that was abuse she's like no 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 like and then the, the guy is in, in the car and all that and like you say she i think she was like she was 10 years old that yeah. was abuse so mm -hmm. you know see for me it's a hard as well because i've got a daughter so yeah. it's hard for, even hard for me who's not really connected to her but to try and, and i don't want to hurt her and say look your mum was a fucking wronging yeah do you know what i mean like because i don't want to 
because she's such a sensitive being that she's even trying to forgive her mum. She's trying to sew up the pain. So who am I to, to say that? But it's just because I've got a fucking daughter. So yeah. I can see, and I could, my daughter's 12, man, and I still see her as a five-year-old. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like To be 10 and 12, like, for you to be sitting there as well. But then I, I think you'll learn a lot from that as a character, and I think you'll be more loving towards, but even people watching will get a better understanding of fucking hell that. Like. But it is the same kind of patterns. But people are in that industry and the, the strippers and they kind of come from the broken home. And I know people say dad issues and that, but it stems a lot more, like emotionally, physically. Like it must be fucking hard to find the balance of your life, especially as both his ADHD, yeah, ADHD. Um, personality disorders. Yeah. Uh, Sophie's got um, bi bipolar. And do you take anything for that? Yeah, we've got medication, but yeah. I mean, no matter what like counseling and stuff that I've been through over the years. I've always found the answers myself. Um, mm. I've had like long talks with people and, but it's always been trying to find the answers yourself. It's like when you're in an abusive relationship, only you can get yourself out of it. No matter how many people told me to get out of them relationships mm. until I got myself out of the relationship was the time I actually got out of it. Do you see you a, a resemblance between you and Sophie? Yeah, I mean, we've both been for a lot of shit. Um, but as we both said, maybe if we met each other earlier, we wouldn't have been this this uh, connected me wouldn't have it wouldn't have been this good but we've been through all them struggles and all that pain mm -hmm. and maybe that's why we we get on so well um because we've had them experiences what was it like going to counseling um it was just like there's something that i did i, I don't know maybe maybe some things were, were all right but it wasn't i don't believe it helped me too much yeah i've only been seeing this therapist for the last five weeks and i think man i'm trying to manipulate that cunt oh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I feel as if I can have it because I've not broke down or anything yet. Yeah, I feel as if I could manipulate him. I feel as if I could have him crying if I wanted. Yeah, because that's the, what I I can do, and that's not yeah. good because he he did say look, you've clearly done a lot of work in yourself. Um, you're clearly it's amazing what you've done, but what you're doing is skipping over the bad parts with positivity. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I can be quite positive, but then as, does that become an act? Because I'm skipping over the trauma and the pain. He's trying to unlock those doors to go through those doors to face the pain to then heal because my relationships are the same patterns three month end yeah. three month end because I don't let anybody in I can right. feel, I can start feeling for you here and you can hurt me I don't want to feel any more pain I don't want to feel any more sadness well, so you know what I, I believe though I, I do believe that if you are lucky enough to find the one as they say yeah. I do honestly believe that Sophie is the one that's why this is the first time I've, I've opened up to her and, hmm. and cried in woman's arms because Sophie is the one communication on it yeah, to, and that, what that is is vulnerability. I don't show vulnerability. Oh, I never have until now. I yeah, too. Because I've came through so much in my life, but I've fucking done it all myself. So yeah. I thought as I fuck everybody else, but yeah. he, he's obviously trying to get the vulnerability to find that feminine side because it's yin and the yang in it. It's the light and the dark. It's the sun and the moon. Like yeah, I've just that's why suicide rate so high in men because we've got the fuck it button. We don't talk about it. You yeah, don't want to talk. True. Women will phone their friends and are sitting in me groups of three and four talking pure shit. Yeah. But then they've healed because they're expressing their feelings and emotions. We ball it up. Yeah. Get a majority of guys go to the pub, but it's a gear, watch the football. Don't talk. Yeah. Talking down and breaking down and being vulnerable and surrendering is a strength. That's the real strength. And I, I, I'm fucking scared if I open up the gates, man, I'll not stop. Yeah. Because I've never really let go of the pain of losing my dad and all that shit my family's been involved in and all the friends and all that shit like I've never really let go I've I probably covered it up with success because then people think you're doing well Yeah. but they don't understand you still battle every day every day is a fucking struggle of course. I, I feel as if I should be happier in what I'm doing but it's because there's so much pressure on myself to keep going there because I'm scared that it gets took away as well and you lose it do you know what I mean like if you see it start, stops working then what? Yeah. everything you've worked for through the years the misery the pain you've went through for what yeah. do you know what I mean it's that's why we, we try and keep our options open but you know people are always going to judge no matter what happens they're always trying to find a way to put you down over something you know Yeah. But we're just trying to keep our options open and, and do as much stuff as we possibly mm -hmm. can you know to, to yeah. earn, earn a good living and, and support for our families how have you dealt with uh, Sophie's young boy leaving uh, well this, it was hard um, but you know, I, I understand that Sophie's does the job that she does, mm -hmm. but you know the way he treated Sophie wasn't good. Um, and you know, I said to her like he's uncontrollable. 
but I feel like because I'm not his dad, how far do I go with things? Yeah. So I, you know, after a year, I sort of got involved a little bit, went up to the point where he was trying to strangle her and all that. And so look, just fucking sort it out. You need to start going to school. Your mum's always done her best. And your mum's not doing what she used to do. Um, you know, she's with me now and I, I tried to do everything that I, I possibly could, but eventually he went back to his dad's who's never been there. And his dad has actually hit him as a young kid and, and, and done a lot of bad for him and never never even been in, in his life. What about family, your own family? Have you got any family? Was it just your gran and your granda? Um, yeah, I still see my mum. Don't talk to my dad. Um, so just my mum is the only one I see. How's that relationship now? Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, mum is just not who she used to be. So she doesn't come out, doesn't do anything, but I don't see as much as I'd like to. It's one thing that me and Sophie were talking about the other day. It's sad, I wish I could do more for her, but she she never wants to do anything, you know? So her dream was swimming dolphins. I went, me and Sophie will take you to swim with dolphins. Yeah, all right, yeah, well, just not now, I'm a bit stressed at the minute. It's always another time. Yeah. I said, mum, let us do it for you. I can just do something for you, all this shit I've given you. Let me do your dolphin dream and take you to Portugal or something like that to swim with these dolphins. But it's always pushed off, you know? Yeah. But I want to try and make her happy because she's one of the ones that's always been there for me. Yeah, we always try and, like everything I do is to try and give the people who who supported me the things that they need. Yeah. But like, when Sophie's prime example, the materialistic shit don't mean fuck all, but when you can just, when you don't give it all the time and give that little bit, then it means something special. Yeah. Because like you say, you can spoil people and then it just becomes, it's like you shagging birds all the time. Like it just, people fucking come in their pants even looking, like a set, looking at a set of tits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. fucking five and ten birds, people thinking it's a dream, but then about come a stage you'll think, I don't even like the look of fannies anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if I ever get to that stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it is it is hard. Um, but like I say, it's it's so good that I found Sophie, but if anything happened to Sophie now and I lost that person that I've been so lucky to find, then... How do you come back from that? That, I don't know. I don't think I would. Because it looks as if you're giving each other a lot. A yeah. lot of attention, a lot of pick-me-ups, because then it becomes a drug. Do you know what I mean? Where you crave that drug. I think we'd go off the rails we'll be dead in a week, to be honest. Yeah. I think everything would come crashing back and we'd probably, yeah, if we ever split up, that is. But if Sophie died, I don't know how I'd get back up from that because this is, she's like everything that I need. Yeah. And, and, one, and, and I just love her and I just couldn't be without her now. Because it seems as if she can't be without each other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then what ha happens if somebody decides that they don't want to be? Like somebody, that's the that's the thing about vulnerability and surrendering. I can't do that because they can leave me. They yeah. can fucking destroy me. Because men, the thing about men, we love fucking hard. Yeah. We do. We genuinely love hard. And that's why we're fucking idiots. Because men cheat because they don't want to get hurt first. That's the method they were thinking. We're fucking yeah. wired up wrong. Instead of just surrendering to that person that you truly love. And if you don't love them, leave them so yeah. somebody else can love them, right? Yeah. Because we're, like, I laugh at men because we are, my, me, my friends, and me, I used to act, I think, how fucking deluded was I? People, girls actually loved me. And I used yeah. to treat them like shit. And then I used to think, they were the mugs. I was the mug. Yeah. And then it was a lie and it was a deceit and it was everything else that come with it. It, it burns you out, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I always... Uh, there was always something missing from my relationships they weren't proper so I felt like I'd go out and, and cheat because I felt like I wasn't getting enough sex from there or I wasn't getting enough of something from there but yeah I should have just you know, been honest with some of them girls and, and not hurt them because there were some good ones there yeah. you know? have you always been a sex addict? yeah as far back as I can remember yeah? yeah well as I say from, from as soon as my nan died which was secondary school mm -hmm. and I started going out there and, and, and playing catch up I've, I've just non-stop been fucking was that just a replacement though if, for, to go over the pain from your gran? Yeah, possibly, you know, along with all the other stupid things that I was doing. Um, but the sex thing is the thing that's continued the most and that is where I met the love of my life. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's got to be... And you still get pleasure out of it? Yeah, yeah, most of the time. And what happens when you're on a bad day? Well, me and Sophie both say that if we're both um, having a bad day, I mean, I'll always say, look, I'm not up for this today, I'm not feeling it, I haven't slept. Sometimes we just don't sleep because of our fucking crazy heads and we're just... You know, when you're lying there in bed and your eyes are closed, but you're constantly thinking things. Mm -hmm. We get that a lot. And I'll say, look, you go to the shoot, I can't. But then she won't go about me and then I won't go about her. But when we are there, we do different scenes, you know, apart. But we're always there for each other, you know. But yeah. not, we haven't done anything separate in a, in a long time. What's the longest you've been apart from each other since you've met? When, before I moved in with Sophie, we was apart for two days. Who was that? <laughs> it was actually hard. I never missed, missed a, a girl. 
and she was like, oh, can't you just come over tonight? And I was just like, oh, well, I'm with the kids and that. Once you meet them and all that, and you know, they, we got introduced slowly. So I was still sort of going back and forward and spending time with the kids and, and times there. But I said it had to be done, but it was actually hard. Mm -hmm. Do you worry that he's could burn out? Because he's a so fucking, he's a hundred mile an hour. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so fast. Would. I don't think we ever would. What happens when you, where do you see yourself in your 40s and that? Um, we've been talking about, you know, a nice villa somewhere in the sun, just taking it easy. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we've, we've got to just keep going and, and trying to be as successful as we can and, and make money and, and hopefully we can get that. What's your mindset like, like a daily routine like for yourself? Is that a struggle? Yeah, we, we are, we are um, very scatty and, you know, we'll be talking about something and go off and something else and something else and then struggle to get back to the first subject. Mm -hmm. So we can be really scatty. So we've got ourselves some notebooks now and we write everything down and that's helping a bit. Your dog, man, nearly died, man. Like, dogs oh. are everything like, that if they go fuck humans i know the dogs are the worst so hard. Mate, like, obviously when you go through that how how is the dog now did your dog get knocked down yeah so he, he got knocked down um just after sophie had come back from her reconstruction on her boob and then we just and then that happened and then now he's getting all this reconstruction so we was obviously shitting it but the moment that it happened it was just i thought it was done because at the at the at, right at that exact time, it had to be a fucking lorry, didn't it? And he was yelping out, and his whole leg was gay. It just looked horrible. So I've just grabbed him. I've ran back to my mum because we just stopped off there. Ran back. And I was just like, no, no. I said, mum, please ring someone, ring someone. So she's come out, rang this medivet, um, Medicare vet place. We rushed him down there before the ambulance came. We said that we'll bring him to you. Mm -hmm. Drove down there, got him in there. A day later, he comes out, and they said he's going to be fine. Um, but then since then, we've, it's been oozing, smelling, green pus, and we've heard that that's an infection which can lead to sepsis, which is what Sophie had as well, and all these mad things. And we're like, we're not doing the right thing. We're changing it. We're putting the ointments on. We've been looking after him. People are like, no, that's not good. That's, he's going to have an amputation there. We then went to another vet who said, yeah, it's going to be amputated. You need to give us like thousands and thousands of pounds. So we was like, fuck that. We took the dog out of there and went back to the other one, worrying what they are going to say, and they've said, no, I don't know why they told you that. It's it's horrific, but we can't. We've done bits of we flushed it and done bits of binding it, but we can't completely cl close that up because then if anything gets trapped in it, it would be amputation. So these other vets have given us all the wrong advice. Mm -hmm. So, but after hearing that last night, you know, we got back, had a lovely session, and <laughs> and yeah, it's it's just we, we you know so happy about it. Tears of joy, tears of joy. We had um, we had a little one in, in the bed, but trying to mind his foot. And you know, he, that's the best way to do, bro. Isn't it? Shag yeah. it out, mate. Yeah. <laughs> shag, shag it out, it out. and then get the dog in, in the bed and have, have and have cuddles. Um, but he's got this bloody cone in his head, so I'm always like, oh, let's take the cone off. You know, it's not good. But yeah. then if he starts licking that 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 area where the bandaging goes through, so we're like, we've got to put it back on. But we don't want to be cruel to the dog, so we want him to not have this cone in his head. But we've got to keep putting it back on in case he licks it and yeah. infects it. But he's fine now. He's fine now. He's going to make it, but. We've got to keep going back every three days so they can monitor it to make sure it doesn't yeah. become infected. Has anybody ever told you you look like Big Yusik, the, bo the boxer? No. Nah. Big guy who fought Anthony Joshua. The big, is a Ukrainian? The big, massive. Oh, cunt. big, big fucker. Yeah, he can fight little fuckers. Well. Oh, I'm not that ugly, am I? <laughs> He's a big, handsome cunt, mate. Big Yusik. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, him. I thought you meant the, the giant guy. Um, I oh, know, the one that um, recently fought someone. Joshua, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Uh, Yusik, the Ukrainian guy, took like Joshua's like bite. He's an upchase, yeah. mate. Yeah, He's I a like good him. cunt, mate. Mm. Yeah, he's a funny bastard, Sorry. mate. He's always dancing about in that. I thought you meant a value of. No, I thought like, it. What no. the fuck? He's, he's all that shit. No, big music, mate. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, yeah. he beat big. He's dancing about. He's a funny yeah, cunt, I like mate. him. And he doesn't hype up or get aggressive nah. on people, does he? He's always nah. cool. He's just and, cool and calm, collective, yeah, mate. I do just like him. Yeah. dances about, mate. Does his thing, mate. That's it. So, where do you go now, mate? From obviously, he's a try to figure out your life. He's a try to make steps to better it. He's a try to do good yeah. to that. He's trying to make changes, which is never easy for anybody, but no. where, where do you go forward for the future? Um, well, we've just got to keep going. And, and as I said, so if, you know, with whatever is going on right now, whether it's with the boob or, or the dog or whatever is going on, we just have to keep going um, and keep doing what we believe in and just keep pushing and pushing because life's always going to throw shit at you, but you just can't give up. Yeah. What about for anybody that's maybe struggling with mental health? What advice would you have for them? Um, I would say, I mean... Yes, you're very lucky if you find that soulmate. But if you don't find that soulmate, you know, don't first of all don't go looking for it, but see if there is a, a friend or family that you can talk to. 
and maybe counselling will help for you. It didn't, I don't believe it did for me. I, I, as I say earlier, I, I believe that you do have to find the answers within yourself. And I used to think they just want to take the money out of me, but I don't want to put you off from, from going there to some people because it, it might help and it, it does help certain people. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't for me, but you know, ignore the shit that's online. Online is like a spiteful, horrible world. I, ignore it and, and try not to let it get you down and keep doing you, um, you know, yeah. and just trying to stay strong. What's all your social media platforms? Where can people get in contact with you? Um, on on Twitter, um, it's Damien Oliver XXX. Instagram, Damien Oliver Official, or the fucking Explorers with two X's rather than you and the C. And on YouTube, the fucking Explorers. What about OnlyFans? OnlyFans is d.o.official. Like to finish up on anything? I think I've I've covered most things, mate. Yeah. yeah. Listen for coming on today and telling your story, brother. I've enjoyed that. Wish you all the best for the future, both of you, mate. Like I genuinely do. Hand in my heart. Hope everything goes well for you, and I hope you fucking get everything you've achieved, brother. Thank you very much. God you bless too. you, mate. Cheers, mate.